Ron Rickhart is associated with Harvard University's Project Zero. And over the past 10 to 15 years, Project Zero has zeroed in, so to speak, on thinking dispositions. The premise behind thinking dispositions is that people have a lot of knowledge and skill. There's stuff in their brain that they could use in productive and creative ways, and yet they don't. And the folks at Harvard are trying to figure out how we can get people to use these knowledge and skills that we spend so much time communicating. In support of this question and this research, Rickhart conducted a study as part of his dissertation work at Harvard and the outcome of that dissertation is published in Intellectual Character. The subtitle of it is What It Is, Why It Matters, and How to Get It. I was fascinated by the book because it talks about intellectual character, something more than simply knowledge and skill, which is the lion's share of what happens in public schools. As a musician, I'm interested in intellectual character, not necessarily in the same exact way as Rickhart outlines in the book. He covers, or he followed for a year, he followed mathematicians or middle school math teachers, language arts teachers, historians, and the like. The thing that is in common with all of these is that they really have to do with intelligence that is easily verbalized. Even though mathematics is, we verbalize it necessarily, I guess, in numbers, but we can verbalize it. So if I want to use Rickhart's ideas about improving the disposition of children to use the knowledge and skills that we spend years giving them, I may have to approach the idea differently because it's not a one-to-one -one correspondence. I believe that Rickhart's ideas have utility for every domain and yet it's not a one-to-one -one correspondence. You cannot take a, what Rickhart presents in his book and apply them directly to another domain. Or maybe you can. It would be unfortunate if we thought that everything should have immediate transfer and application without some sort of cognitive interplay. And that is essentially what Rickhart and his peers, his colleagues at Project Zero are advocating. You have to reflect one of the first things that is presented in the book is this idea of a thinking routine. We explicitly teach how a thinking routine can benefit someone in thinking intelligently. Thinking routines must be short, a few steps. They must be taught explicitly. They must be goal-oriented and we use these routines over and over again so that they become automated, so to speak, within the child's brain. So goal-oriented, explicitly taught, minimal steps, repetition. This is important. If I am going to use a thinking routine for music, how would that look? After mulling this over for quite a, a bit of time and interacting with some graduate students, conversing back and forth about a thinking routine, I have come to this particular point as far as what works for me in an elementary music setting. As I'm thinking about these thinking routines, how can I, how can I help children understand the scope of what music can be and give them a scaffolding, essentially that's what a thinking routine is, give children a scaffolding that they can use day in and day out when they are 
away from me, which is more often than not. What you see here is my vision of a thinking routine. Again, this is A as in one example of a thinking routine. My goal for this particular set of thinking routines is to allow children to take music or take an idea, be it melodic or rhythmic, and turn it into something. It's not recreating something, it is creating something. The first step of our thinking routine is to select a song or a musical idea. On the left side, you can see that the song either can be used in its entirety or a part. There's a choice. The children must choose. How are the children, how are you going to order this particular song? Or if you want to use a motive, if you're going to create something, what is the melodic motive, or I suppose it could be a rhythmic motive. The next decision has to do with meter. Is it a triple or duple meter? We know that all music can be played or sung in either duple or triple, and there are more choices than that. However, I stayed with the most obvious and most basic. So they have to make a decision, duple or triple. The next decision is the starting pitch. Where do the, or not the starting pitch, but the home tone. Where is the home tone? They have to know what the home tone is, where tonic is, or they won't know how to create the harmony that's supposed to support the melody. And this is a hard one for children to understand, as you may know. To determine where the home tone is, the children are asked to sing the final cadence of the song. Most songs end on tonic and so that will be the home tone. The next decision they need to make is whether to sing or play the song in a major mode or a minor mode. And in my work with children I always introduce minor variants of familiar songs and most songs are in a major mode as you know. Minor variants right off the bat within the first couple three weeks. I'm singing simple songs in the minor mode and I'm labeling, labeling them as minor. So they get that repetition. They understand that we can play things in other ways or we can sing things in other ways. Now finally we get to the fun part, at least for the children. And that is how are you going to structure the piece is there going to be an introduction? Is there going to be a coda? How many sections are there going to be? How are the sections going to uh, be arranged? How are you going to orchestrate your piece? Pitched, non-pitched instruments, a cappella. How is it supposed to sound? This is the point. The orchestrate is the thing that children start with. When, if you ask your students, go create a piece of music, they're going to jump right to orchestrate. They're, they will want to play instruments. That's the fun part, is to put something in your hand and make a sound. However, there are so many decisions that must be made prior to that point. And if you think about it, the decisions that are made either intuitively or explicitly are many. There are so many decisions that must be made and the children are able to make those deci decisions if we give them an opportunity to do so. So my thinking strategy, my thinking routine, is based on the idea that children will ultimately end up singing or playing some kind of music and that the thinking routine provides them the scaffolding to make logical, informed, musical decisions about what their piece will ultimately sound like. This is one way to approach a thinking routine in a musical context. Musical contexts are so much more different than any other context. Because it is sound, 
because it is a collaborative art, musicians must account for many, many more decisions in a collaborative way than our friends in the visual arts have to. Visual art is typically one, an army of one. In music, it's an army of many. And those decisions take time to work through, allowing children the opportunity to go through a somewhat regimented, prescribed way of thinking that logically leads to a product that you can perfect is one way to help children become independent. And ultimately, that is the point Rickhart makes in his book, Intellectual Character.